My name is Nivel Zissen. I'm 17, almost 18, like right on the cusp of that, the cusp of freedom and adulthood. I've finished school officially. I'll be graduating in just a couple of weeks. I'm one exam away from saying I'm free forever. I like to think that I'm constantly striving for positivity in my life and surrounding myself with good people and supportive people. Discovering your transgender, it's a lot more complicated than anything else. It's a lot more complicated than your, your sexual identity. With your gender, it's like a whole different thing because no one teaches you that it can be anything except for what you're already told. I mean, that little pink ribbon that's wrapped around your foot when you're in the hospital, like that's, that's it, you know, you can't argue with that. Um, my gender is male and I feel male. The discovery, it's always harder for you than it is for anyone else. No one understands that. When you come out, it's like, this is so hard on me. Look what you've done to me. And it's like, you have no idea what I'm going through. For me, my gender identity and kind of coming out and discovering that, it's a process. You're never gonna fully associate with a label or fully associate with a category or a box because we're, we're not box shaped, we're people shaped and you can't just put us in there because our heads will stick out. Um, I realized that there were certain things I was feeling really uncomfortable about in my life and then I had a big chat to my girlfriend about it on a long road trip. We had a really open conversation and she said, look, maybe you're transgender. And I'm like, no, 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 that's not me. And I'm a proud woman and I'm a feminist. And you know, I, I love women and blah, blah, blah. And then I went home and I looked up things and I searched for my specific things. And everyone was saying everything I was saying. And everyone was saying, oh, when I was little, I would, you know, play role playing games and I would pick the male characters. And I thought, oh, I did that. I still do that. My favourite sims are all male. And that was really like confronting for me. And then, you know, I, I spoke to other people and a lot of people said that as a child, they would kind of pick male clothing. And for five years of my life as a kid, I dressed male and told everyone I was a boy. So I thought maybe that's a bit of a warning sign. <laughs> a lot of people like kind of create an interrelationship between gender identity and sexual identity, which I think is misguided. For me, my sexual identity has been on a parallel path to my gender identity. They've never interrelated, they've never interacted. They've changed as each other have changed, but not kind of a, I don't know, they, it, there was no overlapping. I identified as a lesbian for a while. As soon as I sort of discovered my gender identity, I realized it didn't really fit that well. Um, I now identify I guess as straight, I'm attracted to women, that's about it. If I'm not attracted to women in the future and I'm attracted to men, okay. There's a whole spectrum of gender identity where you can be female or you can be male or you can be female to male, you can be male to female, you can be gender queer, you can just have every little piece of gender mixed up into you because it's not so simple and it's not so black and white. Nothing's black and white. I'm a normal human being. There's no such thing as a normal human being, but by anyone's kind of category, I am, I eat, I sleep, I drink, I have friends and, you know, I do everything that everyone does. So it's really important to like remember that everyone's different and while you like to play with your cats, other people like to play with dogs and that's okay. And, you know, I like to be with girls and identify that I'm a male just like other guys do. Trans people have very unique struggles, I think. For people that never have to question their gender identity or never even think about it, I mean, it's just sort of a given, these issues can be really hard to comprehend. For me, my three biggest struggles are probably looking in the mirror and not seeing how I feel. It's like, why? Why is that like that? How come that happened? Another big issue is like how other people read me. I can go into one shop and be sir or dude or man and another shop and I'm ladies. It kills me. <laughs> you know, I'm doing all these male things like how come you're seeing me this way and, and I can't comprehend it and for other people it's really hard to comprehend as well. My parents always sort of say to me and my family says to me, you have to wait until the whole family is together to make a decision about your transition and things like that and it's like no I don't. And this is my life and this is something I have to do and if I had any other sort of medical condition people wouldn't say wait to get treatment. Let's just see how bad it gets. They'd be like, all right, quickly, let's rush you to hospital and let's quickly get you the surgeries you need. And that's what I need right now. Toilets are, are always an issue. There's always that kind of 
heart-dropping moment where you realise you're in a public space and you need to go to the toilet. 90% of the time I go into the male toilets because I think I'm male and this is the toilet that I associate with. And even though it smells a lot more than the women's toilets and I'm always going to miss that from now on, it's where I feel like I belong. Most people never have to think about the toilets, it's just you just walk in and you're used to it and you know, you know how everything works. Whereas I had to kind of read articles about male toilet etiquette and things like that because I had no idea, I didn't grow up that way. I do feel unsafe sometimes. I get this whole kind of panic about, will I get abused? And that scares me a lot sometimes. I went to the girls' toilets um, not that long ago because there are a bunch of people there who didn't know that I was transgender. And I walked into the girls' toilets and I ran into the cubicle and I just sort of sat there for a moment. I thought, can't do it. Got out, went to the boys. <laughs> like as soon as I sort of smelled the, the urine soaked walls and everything, I was like, this is where I'm meant to be. <laughs> Generally, the journey um, for a transgender person is referred to as a transition. It's really important to know that everyone has a different extent of transition and how they define their transition. A lot, if not all, of transgender people will go through a social transition where they come out to people, they might have a preferred name, and they may legally change their name, which I've officially done. I think it's important that transition is recognised that it's not a choice and it's not something that people kind of choose to go down. It's, it's for me at least, if it was a choice, I'd save a lot of money and buy a nice car instead. Um, but this is what I sort of need to kind of survive and be happy and, and live my life to its full potential and be the best person that I can be. Because I feel like as soon as I can stop thinking about myself and stop being as paranoid and anxious about all of this as I am, I can start living more for other people. So that's really important for me. So my real friends who I've, I've been with for maybe eight years throughout my whole schooling, they've been amazing. And, and those who have really known me well and who are reasonably open-minded have just not been surprised or phased at all. I think the biggest thing to do when a friend comes out to you is don't react um, in a ridiculous way. Don't kind of look really shocked. Give yourself like maybe a five second countdown before you ask the question and ask yourself first, can I Google this? But just remember that this doesn't change who your friend is. I mean, if you've, if you've been friends with them for however, however long, whether it's been a week or, or 10 years, they're, they're that person. I came out to my entire year level over Facebook. I thought it was the best way of doing it because I didn't really want to sit everyone down and have an announcement. And that way I was able to be vocal through my words and people could kind of refer to it if they didn't understand or anything. A pronoun or an example of a pronoun is um, he, her, him, she. A lot of people identify with the pronouns associated with their gender. Some don't and some prefer gender neutral pronouns. I myself go by he or him. Yes, it will take time and you shouldn't stress if you do make a mistake, just politely correct yourself and that's fine. But it's really important to practice, especially when they're not in the room, because I hate to think that people talk about me behind my back and they use she. When it comes to people's preferred names as well, again, if you stuff up, that's okay, just politely correct yourself. But don't kind of continue to do so even if you're aware of it. I'd like to... Um, grow old with my girlfriend. I'd like to have a family. I want kids. I want little versions of me running around the place. I've, I've always wanted to be one of those dads who, you know, goes running in the park with a stroller. I think that's really cool. I want to be like a, a middle-aged man in Lycra. It's just so stylish, you know, pretty, you know, average stuff, nothing too exciting. To anyone questioning their sexual identity or their gender identity, Know that there's no rush to have an answer. I think that people constantly sort of tell you you have to either be this or that or, you know, you just have to know. Just don't put too much pressure on yourself to define yourself and just find as many resources as you can. If you're questioning your gender identity, reach out to people you're close to, talk to someone who's maybe been through it before, a therapist, a counsellor. I've been seeing a psychologist and a psychiatrist for a while and that's been really helpful for me. Uh, to everyone watching, that means everyone. My biggest message to you is just, just because this might not be a pressing issue in your life right now, it might not be entirely relevant, and that's totally fair enough. It wasn't relevant to me until eight months ago. Try and be educated, try and be as educated as you can. If you leave watching this video and you have questions, get online and, and research them. You never know when a family member or a distant friend or an acquaintance you meet might identify this way and, and might 
you know, conform to this sort of um, community. And, and if you've seen this video and you've actually gone out and educated yourself about it, you're just going to be the best person ever for them to interact with because you'll, you'll just be the most supportive and tolerant person that they would ever expect to meet. Um, and I think that's what everyone should aim to be. Um, surprise people with your acceptance. <laughs> <laughs>